testing. Good morning and welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning session. Now this is a school and it is not a church and neither we affiliate with any church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of his eternal pattern, purpose and plan operating throughout eternity unto this present day. Now this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Harry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We had started brand schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established in February 2021. Now, in this school, we used to teach by the true and original names and titles from the Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It has also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name, and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title. But unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he's incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart in his pure spirit state as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him, in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right with himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifests itself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as 
Yahshua, the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth made? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Now after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of the streetfold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as it really is and as it actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without the six of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the power and latent in the man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the devil, the serpent, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And they is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men, whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have a prayer by Dr. Joe Savayos. Our scripture lesson is Psalms of First Division. First Division of Psalms. And our scripture will be Dr. Ray Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Let's bow our minds, our, our heads and minds for a moment of prayer. Well, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, we have got one more time here to learn thy purpose, pattern, and plan through your only Son, Yeshua the Messiah. We ask that you enlighten us from here on because things are getting very heavy in the sense that uh, we can see it through the news. Holy Father, again, we are thankful that you have got us here today. Let us all say things smoothly, uh, Holy Son, Yeshua the Messiah. And I will say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Morning class. Morning. I'll be reading uh, Psalms, the first division of Psalms, and I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of Yahweh, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and wheresoever he doeth shall prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of righteousness. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteousness, but the way of the wicked shall perish. I have read Psalms, the first division. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaker, uh, I just want to make a brief testimony. Yeah, I, I, things uh, happen in a week that uh, make me, cause me to think about class and uh, what I've learned and things, my state before I came into class, and the state that I'm in now. And talking to uh, people out in the world, like Christianity, you don't, you, like I said, you can realize how you were deceived in religion, okay? Your mind, since being a child growing up in these churches, are slanted to the way that you're being taught in these churches by the ones that are, are, are teaching the people, the crowds, not knowing the truth about what's written in the Bible, okay? They think they're under the, the I say, the cloud of uh, deception, believing that they have salvation in practicing some type of these carnal ordinances, whether it be Lord's suppers, uh, 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 baptisms, that type of deal, ceremonies, they believe that's righteous for them. I mean, today, in these churches, I say to me, that's another thing, okay, before I get into it. That's what they believe. I came out of that stuff. I used to walk around with a condemned state, in the condemned state, for a long time, in my, uh, uh, I can see back in childhood till my adulthood condemned state because I could not keep these things or some type of it, okay, which they teach out in these churches until I met somebody in this teaching that proved to me these did not ex these don't exist in this age, okay, and plus it wasn't given to the world to do. When this man, Henry Clifford Kelly, had his divine panoramic vision in 1931, it was shown to him straight from the Creator himself what the purpose, what his purpose was. Okay? You can read about it, but when we learn this is not of him, but is of the Creator himself, Yahweh Yahweh. And we find out that it made, it made it plain and simple that these laws the one I just pointed to here on a corner ornament chart, were given to the Jews and Jews only. Okay? Not to the Gentiles. Those aren't the Jews, they're Gentiles. Yahweh separated the Jews from the Gentiles through Abraham. We know that because you read the history, where it started. Okay? That's in this teaching we do. 
We go and we research these things. Right. I'm not standing you and uh, telling you because, believe me, because I'm telling you, and I give you a, th uh, a few scriptures out there to back it up, okay? We go a little deeper into that. Now, I, 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 I post invites for the classes and uh, Saturday I po posted one and it was, it was heavy on my mind that the adversary, he's been here from the beginning of time or from the beginning of creation, if I can say it that way, okay? He deserved the woman in the garden, okay? The first woman in the garden. But before that, as we've been learning over here in the, on this chart here, he tried to deceive the angels in heaven, okay? In the angelic realm, he deceived a third of the heavenly host. And we find out that was innumerable. You can't, you can't count the uh, innumerable. You can't count a third, but it was a third that caused them to die and be cast out of heaven into the earth plane. Okay? Now his job, the devil's job, is to deceive you. Okay? There's a verse there in uh, I think it's Revelation 9 chapter, 12 verse, if I'm correct. See, I can write things down, I'll forget them in the next deal. Where it says that he deceived the whole world. And as I put in the invite, I say, you're in the world. How do you know you're not being deceived? You've not been deceived. You know? What does it say? Nine and what? Twelve? Revelation? Or 12 and 9, or what, what are you looking for? That says where uh, you deceive with the whole world. It's in the 12th chapter. There's another one in Isaiah 2. I know I was going to forget these scriptures. But anyway, I know you have read these things. Okay? And uh, that's a job to deceive you. Okay, and uh, in Revelation 2 it talks about Mystery Babylon. Come out of her, my people. Maybe that's the thing. Uh, nine in the uh, King James, probably ten in the Holy Name. Well, yeah, we use two types of Bibles here. Okay. Twelve and nine? Where, where you at? Twelve and nine. Twelve and nine. Are you reading out the holy name? King James. Okay, that should be it. King James. I mean, yeah. the holy name is, what is it? It's, no, no, you're not. Ten and nine. Ten and I mean, twelve and nine, I'm sorry. Twelve and nine. Twelve and nine. Okay, I'm reading out the holy name. No, I don't know. Is that the holy name with your hands? Yes. Oh, so then it should be probably ten. It's ten. Go ahead. Hear what you got. Somebody read. <laughs> Somebody read. And that great dragon was cast out. That old yeah. yeah, sure Okay. Put it up close. Put it up to close your mouth. And, and that, uh, that old serpent, and that great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay. Talk about that old serpent. Why is old serpent? Because he was here in the garden. Way back there in the beginning with Adam and Eve, that old serpent has come down from time, deceiving everybody. How do you know you're not deceived? You know? I've been in churches, I mean, people call themselves having the Holy Spirit, telling each other they have the Holy Spirit, getting baptized and all that. See? And like I just pointed out, that these were given to the Jews and Jews only. Now, if you believe in the Messiah, the Savior of the world, 
This was his mission. Uh, Paul states what the gospel is. Okay, is that 1 Corinthians 10 chapter or 2 Corinthians? Be not ignorant of something. Now Paul points out what the gospel is. Okay, the First, glad tidings. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. He says, I declare unto you the gospel. Singular, not gospels. You know, like you have the, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those books are written years after Messiah's death. Read. Which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, first of all, read, of all, that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for how our he sins. How died for your sins, read. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, read. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. We have it right here on this chart. Okay. Came on the cross. Read. And that he rose again the third day. And he was buried in the script, in, in the sepulchre here, in the, in the tomb. And he raised on the third day. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. That's the gospel. What you read, Magdalene, those are letters from the apostles to different congregations or assemblies. That's not the gospel. They talk about the gospel, but the gospel is the death. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Messiah. Okay? That's the gospel. This is not the gospel. Okay. These are dead works. The Messiah said, and we got over it, Matthew 5 and 17. This was the mission of the Messiah. So if you know your Savior, you call yourself a good Christian, you gotta know these things. You gotta ask questions. Read. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To fulfill. Now the Messiah, he was born from the Virgin Mary, supposed father Joseph. They were what? They were Jews. So he came out of the lineage of the Jews. But himself, that was holy. That seed was planted in Mary. Okay, she was a virgin. But he came to the loins of the Jews, okay? Being under the law, okay? And this law was given, okay, in Mount Sinai. Okay, uh, you're supposed to be dated here, 1490, okay? Back, way back here. So we have, we look on the chart here, we have the Mosaic Covenant. Okay. Abraham promised the third age, the law of cardinal ordinances, okay, was given to the third age. The Messiah was born during that period of time. So that makes him being born under this law. Okay? The law that was given from Mount Sinai unto Moses and the children of Israel. Only. It wasn't for the world. Okay? But the Messiah, we just read, said he came in to fulfill that. Why? Because they could not keep it. Children of Israel could not keep it. You can read about it and in kings and all that, what happened to the children of Israel because of disobedience out here in the wilderness? 
They paid for it. Their kingdom was destroyed. Yahweh took them into uh, bondage. Okay? Their tribe was broken up. That's what Yahweh did to them because of disobedience. Okay? Now, those things you have to learn, learn about to understand the beginning of Yahweh's purpose. To understand where you come from. Now, Christianity, where does that come? Exactly. You know? <laughs> During the time this was going on, okay, this is about the time that Christianity came in. Okay? After Pentecost. Right. Okay? When they were out persecuting the brethren, the apostles, murdering them. Killing him. Matter of fact, Paul had a hand in that. But he was converted. Yahweh chose him. Chose him to be the twelfth apostle. So they call him one of the greatest apostles. Okay? We know these things because we study these things. Okay? And what I'm saying is once you come out of that deception and you begin to learn the purpose of Yahweh, you could look back and try to warn those people that you've been deceived. Now, you may think the devil's running around in a red suit, pointed tail, horns on his head with a little spear, scaring kids and old people, you know? Nah. When he appeared to this woman up here, the woman in the garden, he was beautiful. She didn't run around the garden and go hide behind Adam. Okay? She saw it. She appeared, you know, appeared to, to her. Okay? And the description of the adversary or the devil is in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. You know? I'm not going to read it, but you want to know what he looks like? Read it. Look at detail. His voice. How he looks, his covering. And these people, he says, uh, there's a, a scripture that he would make his angels, uh, his ministers, angels of light. You know? So you have the adversary, okay, sitting on the throne that John writes about in, in uh, Revelations, but he makes his ministers, I mean, makes his uh, angels ministers of light. There's those demons that were cast out with them, innumerable. How do you know you haven't been deceived? Okay? That's the question I pose in, in, in that, how do you know? You're not gonna learn it out in the church. <laughs> I'm telling you now, because from what I hear, and what I know, their mind is seared. It's got a continuing reference, oh, I'm covered in the blood. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Well, that's what I said. But I got my butt knocked down spiritually because I didn't know what I was talking about. The blood. No, you're washed in his blood. Right? When he died on the cross, he shed his blood, which brought in the new covenant. That's the blood you're washed in. Okay? Yes. So. Uh, I don't know if I'm not that, but that, those things, when you're in the school, when it's teaching, you, you learn, it, these things pop up. Especially when you talk to these uh, people that have demons incarnated in them, thinking they're, they have salvation, okay? And they're talking to you, and you're listening to them. <laughs> it's sad, you know. You, you, you want to, you, know, you, you can't. My minister said this, my minister said that, you know. Well, what about what you say? What, what, go check it out for yourself. That's what I'm saying. Check it out for yourself. Okay. So, uh, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll call the next speaker. But just a little testimony of things that we do get into. So when you bump into one of us, beware. You do know something. <laughs> yes. Okay? <laughs> so... <laughs> okay.
Our next speaker would be uh, uh, Dr. Williams. Transcribed 
you have ample information, you know, to use, you know, to save you. See, now somebody would probably think, you know, and I'm sure some do. Well, you guys think you can study up on this, you know? And like, no, <laughs> no, you can't study up on it. However, you are allowed to read, research, and rehearse the matter. And the revelation, that's Yahweh's department. See, the reading, researching, and rehearsing is like a farmer. You go out in the field, you, you know, you clear the stumps, you furrow the land, you know, uh, you uh, dig an irrigation ditch, you plant the seeds, maybe you might stick a scarecrow up in the middle of the field. You do all of that to make the preparation, but it's the sun, the S-U-N, that's got to shine down, you know and make that seed germinate and grow, see? And that's what Dr. Kennedy did. He, he created an organization, he created these charts so that he could furrow, furrow your brain, you know, furrow your mindset, prepare you for the revelation of Yahshua Messiah, that is to say, him right. appearing in you and revealing to you the aspects of his purpose and plan, okay? Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you feeling? Anybody always ask about you. You can tell them you're doing okay. Mm -hmm. I'm doing okay. I'm feeling Let's, good. Let's speak to the mic. Is it on? Turn it on. Up. Okay, go ahead. Hello, speaking. Go ahead. This is Kim. When I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fine. I appreciate it. People are asking about how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing okay. All right. Okay. Let's put that down. And stick your hand in here. And pull us out something to start us off with. No peeking. Mm -hmm. which is the beginning of the post diluvian age. All right. Here we go. Beginning of the post diluvian age. All right, now, as always, we have a pattern. This is the divine pattern of the universe. Hebrews 8 and 1. Let's start there. And I'm going to try to combine some elements of what the previous uh, vessel brought up. And hopefully we can have a nice meal out of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hebrews, Hebrews 8 1. Mm -hmm. Now, the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Mm -hmm. We have such a high priest whom is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which Yahweh pitched and not man. Now, see, this is the true tabernacle that Yahweh pitched and not the man. And that, and listen, that includes the universe. Right. Because the universe is in two distinct parts the angelic and physical creation. That is the universe, that is the tabernacle that Yahweh pitched and not the man. So if there's a tabernacle pitch, then that means there's a priesthood that's in it as well that's operating in this tabernacle. All right, now jump down to verse 5. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses, Moses was admonished of Elohim mm -hmm. when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. Okay, let's see. See, it's a pattern of heavenly things, all right? That's why we use this pattern. See, because most of us have never really glimpsed the incorporeal creation, or right. angelic creation, 
I mean, we may have seen an angel or two or something like that, but I mean, as far as what's going on in there, we just don't know. Mm -hmm. So we have to take the visible things to understand the invisible things, okay? And that's the way these charts are. These charts are made in a way so that you can use the divine pattern of the universe to understand the various aspects of the purpose as Yahweh has laid them out through the dispensations and ages. We kind of went through that in the last several sessions. See, okay? Now here, we have the beginning of the post diluvian age, all right? And, well, let me say this before I get to that. This migratory pattern, yeah, that's what I meant to say. This migratory pattern is a is the greater, is a representation of the greater and more perfect sanctuary, right. which is the universe. Okay? And it's the comparison. See, just like there are seven steps here, there are seven steps here. Both of these two plates compare to each other. Right. Mm -hmm. That's why I say, you know, this, this is really a very simple operation. There are people that, that make this harder than what it is. Right. And in some cases, some people truly overthink these charts. You know, they try to, you know, and I know I used to be one of them. You know, before we had them all, you know, the way we are now back in the day, like in the textbook, you know, they were small, black and white. I used to get a magnifying glass and just look for every little aspect, every molecule, you know, what I could ascertain from that. Okay. And sometimes we do, we overthink instead of just looking for the obvious simplicity of these things, of what's happening on the charts. That's why I say you have to take into consideration one, there's, there's three compartments, because it's threefold, same way here. There are seven steps in this tabernacle pattern, just like there are seven steps here. There's a priesthood that operates in this pattern. Just like over here, they follow the phenomenal cloud. Right. There was an angel in that cloud, see, leading them and guiding them, following, you know, they were following that, that, that phenomenal cloud. All right, so you have to take the things in principle, and that's what these things are in principle, but precepts even, right. which are the same thing. Principles and precepts here to understand what's going on elsewhere because everything is co-related. Always remember this, the manifestation will change, but the principle always remains the same, mm -hmm. okay? First step is the gate, see? Which almost, it's the straight gate, which all must enter into. That's compared to the door of the Israelites' household down here in Egypt. The second step is the brazen altar of sin sacrifice with the four horns on it, with blood put on it a continual burning that's compared to the door of the Israelites' houses where they had to put the blood on the lintel, the two side posts and the, the basin at the bottom. This is the brazen, uh, brazen labor where the priests wash themselves and their sacrifices. Also, it's a, it's, a, it's a type of a washing of regeneration that is compared to the Red Sea over here, all right? Here, this is the fourth step, which is the door. At the door, you have the cup of holy anointing oil, signifying spirit. See, that signifies the Red Sea miraculously opening up, and they followed that phenomenal cloud through, which is a type of spirit, okay? Here, this is the fifth step. The whole fifth step is this whole holy place, which is also the sanctuary. Here, you have light. You have bread. You have intercessor. The, the candlestick for the light here, mm -hmm. it was a six foot tall. I mean, you can get as elaborate as you want. And it's good to be elaborate. It's good to know all the persnickety things of it. But the things you want to ascertain out of it are the principles, right. the precept. This is the golden lampstand. You, the principle is light. This is the golden table of shoe bread. There were 12 loaves on here with a golden corona around See, but the principle is bread. This is the golden altar of incense where four ingredients were made on here and it was a sweet smelling savor and to Yahweh to stitch to mask the stench of burning flesh here. But the principle you want to get out of this is that it is an intercessor. You have the principle of 40 here because it took 40 weeks to build this tabernacle. Right. Over here, the Israelites are out here 40 days, 40 years in the wilderness. Also, they, we said there was a phenomenal cloud that led them. It was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so they were in constant light 
like the lampstand here. They were manna was given to them from heaven, see, which is like the bread. There was an angel in that cloud, so he was the intercessor. He was the interceder between the Israelites and Yahweh. That's like the, the altar of incense here. Here you have the second departmental veil, blue, purple, and scarlet, that separated the holy place from the most holy place. It was written in twain because it's pointing up to Yahshua's flesh, because the, tent, the veil in the temple written in twain in Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. Right. All right, that's compared to the Jordan River here. The Jordan River divided them, mm -hmm. so that there's so that Joshua and that new birth can cross over into Canaan's land. See, that's the six steps. See, these are principles that you look at and you remember. All right, here the most holy place. The seventh step is the Ark of the Covenant, with the two archangels on top of a mercy seat. All right, inside was the tables of stone, the Ten Commandment tables of stone, that the second tables of stone that Moses had, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that burned the house. Right. Here you have Canaan's land. In Canaan's land, you had the tabernacle was, was eventually put on Mount Zion, which is in Jerusalem, and it sat there for 45 years. After that, the inner contents were put into the temple here, Solomon's temple that was built. It was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. And it was built in such a way, gradiating asset. The porch was at one level, the sanctuary was at the next level, and at the peak was the oracle with a golden dome on top, mm -hmm. looking like a man sitting on a throne. See, a seat of authority, and that's compared to the Ark of the Covenant here. Now, you can elaborate as much as you like, but what you want to get is the principles out of it, because you're going to use these same principles to understand what's going on on all these charts and plates. All right? It's the same principles. I always say it like this, there's seven steps, which really means that there's only seven correlations. If you can learn seven correlations, then you can learn to correlate these charts. It's really that simple. Here's something else you have to keep in mind as well, too, and that's Genesis 28 and 10. Keep this in mind. And if you do that, I would say your experiences in going through these plates Will be, will be great. Because once you understand the basic premise of it, the plates themselves will begin to teach you and guide you on how to understand it. Mm -hmm. It will teach you. What do you have? You are Genesis 28 and 10? I think so. And Jacob went out from Beersheba mm -hmm. and went towards Haran. Yes. And he lightened up a certain place and tarried there all night. Because the sun was set, and he took of the stones of the place and put them for his pillow mm -hmm. and lay down in the place to sleep. Now he lay down in the place to sleep, which is a type of death. Go right. ahead. And he dreamed. And he dreams. See, right here, that's a type of a burial. He's immersed right. in a dream. Go ahead. And, and behold, a ladder set up mm -hmm. on the earth, mm -hmm. and the top reach to the heavens. Now this is the heaven. This is the third heaven. See, each step is like a rung on a ladder. Right. And you're climbing up and you know and down on this ladder. And that's really what you you're doing on all these plates. Because keep reading and it'll it'll make itself matter. And the angels of Elohim ascended and descended on it. Now the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. See, that's what these plates do. Descending Ascending, descending, ascending, descending, ascending, you know, like a wavelength. See? And because it's like that, there's a rhythm and flow to these places that a lot of people, well, don't seem to, to get. And you won't get it at first glance until you begin to engage right. these plates. Once you begin to engage these plates, then you will. It will happen, believe me, it will, because you'll see the rhythm and the flow of this. And, and, and like, just like, just like a river, you know, you're paddling out there, you're just going along with the flow, you're navigating it, you know, you know, the currents and stuff, the eddies and things. And this, and that's what you have to do. You have to allow yourself to become an instrument so that the charts 
with, and I say charts, but the, it's really the vision that is changeable, as far as I'm right. concerned. It's the vision that's going to teach you, it's going to reveal you. Because somebody said, oh, it's Joshua who's going to be. That's what this is. What you're looking at is Joshua. This is Joshua the Messiah. What you're looking at, this vision. Right. This pattern. Understanding the pattern. That is the Holy Spirit. See, it blows my mind that somebody says, well, I got the Holy Spirit, but you can't explain nothing about this pattern. Right. <laughs> Who are you truly kidding? Mm -hmm. Really? And this is what Dr. Kinley brought about. He, the name of the course is Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. Who is Yahshua the Messiah? Right. There's no trinity involved here. They're all one. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. The, did we finish reading that? Yeah. 13, it says, And behold, Yahweh stood above it mm -hmm. and said, I am Yahweh, the Elohim. The L of Abraham, thy mm -hmm. father, okay. and the L of Isaac. Good enough. Good enough. All right, get the other thing that we, that we can do something. Isaiah is 33, verse 9. Line upon line, that's what I want. 28. 28 and 9. And 9. And 9. Thank you. See, I'm, I'm getting over stuff. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. whom, whom shall we teach knowledge? And who shall we make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weak from the milk and drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. See, precepts, spirit, the water, the blood. These are precepts. Read. Line upon line. See, see, there's a bloodline that goes across this plate. There's a water line that goes across this plate. There's a spirit line that goes across this plate. Okay? And it's line upon, it's line Line upon line, precept upon precept. Go ahead. Here a little and there a little. We hear a little in the law, first five books of the Bible, there a little in the prophecy. Okay, go ahead. For with stammering lips uh -huh. and another tongue will they speak to this people. That's what happened back here. Moses complained, he was a stammerer, but Yahweh said, in your air, your brother, you know, good speaker, he'll speak for you. You'll be a, a law to him and he will be your prophet. Right. So you got Aaron and, 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 and uh, Moses meeting out here, going down together, representing the law and the prophets, rendering judgment upon Pharaoh and Egypt. But here a little and there a little continue. To whom he said, this is a rest. Now this is the rest. See, in other words, because the previous we could talk about these works that people that the world do, these works. Well, this is the rest. You don't have to do this. Right. Because he said, this said, take my yoke upon you, you know, and learn of me. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What can be, what can be anything easier than correlated illustrations right. on a chart? Mm -hmm. What can be easier than that? See? My yoke is easy and my burden light. I am not asking you to you know, go out and find a lamb, you know, for you to sacrifice a bullock or something, you know, or go down to the river and get dunked in, or have it just passed over, or tie it, or some other ceremony, or you come over and get circumcised. You know, we'll, we'll supervise it. You know, we're not asking you to do any of that. Right. Because we want your burden to be easy and light. It's nothing easier and lighter than correlating and playing one thing with another. It's nothing easier. I mean, that's, that's light. That's a light burden. Right. As far as I'm concerned. Continue. Wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. Uh -huh. This is the refreshing. This is the refreshing. Because in it, it's the spirit of Yahweh that's teaching you and showing you his principles throughout his purpose and plan. And that is what refreshes you. Right. Not just it refreshes you daily. It refreshes you as you go through the ages even. 
See, this is the respect, knowing that, oh, okay, that's why, you know, you don't see us, man, getting out here acting crazy, because we see, that's not to say we don't have problems, but we're not out here, you know, shooting up some, some elementary school or something right. like that, or, you know, you know, because yeah. we see, we see what's happening. We see how Yahweh is operating his, his, you know, his purpose throughout the world, all right, the age, continue quickly. Yet they would not hear. Mm -hmm. But the word of Yahweh was unto them, precept upon precept, mm -hmm. line upon line. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. Go ahead. That they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. In other words, see, it's really not your responsibility to prove to somebody else what you believe is true. That's up to Yahweh. All you got to do is present it. Mm -hmm. and let, you know, now they can sit up here and say, ah, I don't believe it, but if presented properly, there's no one in the world that can properly refute it. They can right. just say, well, I don't believe it, but refute it. Refute it. Refute that. I mean, this is threefold, most holy place, holy place, go around about. Refute the fact that an atom is a proton, neutron, electron. Refute that. <laughs> refute the fact that a cell is a nucleus, nucleus cell bottom. Refute that. You know, refute that you're that you're made of a head region, chest cavity, abdominal region. Refute that. It's impossible. You can say I don't believe it, but refute it. <laughs> right. You know, anybody can say anything. I mean, you know, I mean, you got people today still believing in a flat Earth, okay? You know, but you know, and, and that can be easily refuted. <laughs> believe me. All right. Is there anything else to that? That's about pretty much it. All right. Okay, I, I, I did all of that just to make a preface so that we can talk about this plate here. This is the beginning of the post-Diluvian age. And this happened about, since we were to deal with dispensations as of late, this is happening during the second dispensation, which is the Noahic dispensation. And as we've said before, dispensations have the power to close an age right. and to open an age. Okay, so now here we have the beginning of the post diluvian age. Here the wicked is destroyed. That's a death. See, that's like on the altar of sin and sacrifice. And the whole earth is covered by water. That's a figure of baptism. I want the, the angelic transgression plate. 14. 14. Yeah, she's going over there. And see, here's the figure, now here's the whole earth. It's in a flood, you know, which is a figure of a baptism. And here you have the ark on top of the waters. That would be like the spirit. See, that would be like the spirit of, of Elohim moving across the face of the deep. Okay, let's, let's go to that chapter. I think it's the eighth chapter of Genesis. And Elohim remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And Elohim made a wind to pass over the earth and the water assuaged. As assuaged? Yes, assuaged. The foundation also of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens were stopped and the rain from the heavens was restrained. And the waters receded from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abased. And the ark rested in the, in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, in the, in the tenth month and the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it seemed to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened, opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Okay. Now let's look up here. All right. 
So now here we have the wicked destroyed, that's a death. The whole earth is inundated in water, which is a figure of baptism. And see, the ark is on top of the water, see, which is a figure of resurrection. Right. See? Because, see, in the scriptures, and, and, and Moses wrote how the spirit of Elohim moved across the face of the deep. That's, that's a repeat of that here with the ark. And then we read about the raven being cast out. See, the raven being cast out, draw a line. Mm -hmm. It's like Satan being cast out here. Right. See, and look, this is still darkness here. Just like he's cast into the theory of darkness and the raven. And look, this happened after 40 days. Uh, it was after 40 days, see, that the, that the raven was cast out. See, all right, keep reading. He waited seven days, and he sent forth a dove from him mm -hmm. to see if the waters were abased from off uh, the face. Abated. Abated, I'm sorry. Abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for her soles of her feet, her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark. For the waters were not, were on the face of the wa um, I'm sorry. The waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Mm -hmm. And he waited yet another seven days, mm -hmm. and yet he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Mm -hmm. And the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So no one knew that the waters were obeyed from off the earth. And he waited yet another seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. Okay, so now, he sent the dove out three times. Mm -hmm. right. See, why three times? See, let's right. come over here to the tabernacle pattern. See, how many times did the high priest go up here on the day of atonement? Three times. See, we got here Mount Sinai. How many times did Moses go up Mount Sinai? Three times. See, we can come over here. Here's Joshua, see, praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. How many times did he check on his disciples? Three times. Three times. Three times. You see what I'm saying? See, these things are correlatable. Okay? Now, Let's look at in here. See, Noah let out the window. He opened the window. Mm -hmm. The window, see, that's the type of the light. Right. That would be like the lampstand. See, right? Noah had provisions on here. You know, because they brought provisions in it. So they had bread in here. You can read what it said that they brought provisions. Right. And see, and the Holy Spirit in Noah, see, that's the intercessor. See, between Yahweh and, and those eight right. that's in this boat, see. Okay, now, there's something in the textbook, I don't know if I can find it. See, the, the Yahshua kind of addresses it a little bit. Volume 4, page, page 20. That's what I want. Alright, go on to the bottom of the page. It says, it was by the flood. Okay. After the flood, okay, uh, I'm reading after the flood, post of living age, noetic covenant. Page 20 at the bottom of the page. It was by the flood that Yahweh had cast Satan and his hosts out of mankind and destroyed Satan's earthly antediluvian kingdom, built by Cain without a divine pattern and a divine specifications. See City of Enoch in the land of Nod, plate 16, up, 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 opposite to page 24, leaving Satan after the flood without residence in mankind. And Yahweh said unto Satan, <coughs> Whence come thou? And he answered, From going to and fro in the earth, and walketh up and down in it. And Satan walking, rest, okay, walking uh, to and fro in the earth in the right places. Oh, I'm, I'm, 
Come on. Seeking. Come on. Somebody try it again. Seeking. Seeking risk. Risk. Uh, find it none. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is when he's come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter into him and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so should it be, be also unto his wicked generations. Yeshua said in John 12, 31, Now, is the judgment of this world now should the prince the prince of this world the post illuminate be cast out and after the the soul say okay that's good enough right there because see that's to see the part i wanted it was when uh <clears throat> go back up and, and said okay when it said uh it says that yahweh said in the same west comes down he's and he's quoting job right and said job and he answered from going to and fro in the earth walking up and down in it, and Satan walking to and fro in the earth through dry places. And it says, see dry earth after the flood, Genesis 8, 13, 14. Seeking rest and finding none. Read Genesis 8, 13. See, this is the point I'm making. And this is the textbook that Yahshua is referring to when, he, when he's making this quote in Matthew. Okay, Genesis 8, 13. Read. And it came to pass in the 600... And the first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. They were dry. Okay, listen. The waters were dried from off the earth. Read. And Noah removed the covering of the ark. Uh huh. And looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. The face of the ground was dry. The ark is up here in the mountains of Ararat, between the not on Mount Ararat, but between the two mountains, just like. Uh, the cloud sat between the two archangels, just like the cloud sat between the two archangels in the tabernacle. Draw a line. Here's the here's Noah's ark between and the, between the mountains of Ararat, right. and see this dry ground. That's why who's got the other scripture? Get uh, uh, Matthew because he quotes Matthew uh, 12th chapter. Somebody hold that because we're gonna keep reading that. Get get Matthew 12 and. Uh, the 28. Speak louder into the mic so that the camera pick it up. But if I cast out demons. 12, uh, no, 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 12, 40, 12, uh, uh, 43. 12, 43. When the unclean spirit mm -hmm. is gone out of man. Uh, now, man. see, now let's look here. When the, when the unclean spirit is gone out of man, when did that happen? That happened here when the wicked was destroyed. Mm. He walked through see, the dry places. See, in other words, see when the earth was drowned, the people drowned out, and those demons that were incarnated, that they're now they're loose. Right. Okay. And so now here's this is after the we just read in, in uh, Genesis. Here's the it's dry. See, it's, this is at this point now when the earth is dry. And the ark is, on, is in the mountains of Ararat, but Noah and his family have not yet come out. Mm. They're still in the ark. And so, keep reading. And in the second... Um, no, no, Joe. And he walked out through the dry places seeking rest and finding none. Now see, now at this point, he's going through dry places. We read that in, in Genesis. Mm -hmm. Dry places seeking rest and finding none. What do you mean? He can't break into the ark. Right, right. He knows the people up there, but he can't break up in there. See, so he's going through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Okay, keep, keep reading Matthew. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. Now I'm going to return back to my house from whence I came. When does that happen? Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen until after Noah and his family comes out, and they repopulate the earth. Mm -hmm. See, and when they repopulate the earth, this is what happens. Read. And when he came out, he find it empty, swept and garbage. So now all these people, these new folks, these new people come out, they come out empty, swept and garbage. And so now what happens? I'm going to do what, Read. Then he goes in, then goes he 
and taken with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Uh -huh. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Now the last state of the man is worse than the first. What do you mean? Well, here's the last state, I said, because 101 years later, they built the Tower of Babel. Right. You see that now? Now the last state is worse than the first because, because now that building, see, in, in the in the Antediluvian age, Cain had already built the city, the city of Enoch. Right. And the city of Enoch was a representation of his throne on the earth. Hmm. See, look, here, Aaron, they did have an abiding, and the seventy elders, they saw the Elohim of Israel, and under his feet, as it were, a pavework of a, of a sapphire stone. Okay? But we know that this is really his footstool. Right. Okay. Cain, who said, who with the with with the the mystery of iniquity incarnated in him, said the same thing. He said, "I'm going to be like the Most High." So when he built his throne, I'm talking about the city of Enoch. The city of Enoch represents his throne on the earth, right. heaven. You know, because he's elevated. Talking about Cain. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. It's the same way here with the Tower of Babel. Because Nimrod, who built it, he said, well, look, let's finish reading up. Oh, you finished reading Matthew, did you? About the last thing was worse than the first. Right. Did you finish that? That's good enough. Okay, go back to, to Genesis, where you left off. Okay, uh, verse 14. And in the second, second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, the earth was dry. Mm -hmm. And Elam spoke unto Noah, saying, Come out of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy wife and thy sons' wives were, were with there. Bring forth every, bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all the flesh, both of birds and of cattle, and of every creeping thing, and creepeth that creepeth upon the earth that they may breathe abundantly in uh, the earth. Hold on, hold on, I need to, I need to get something here and put it in context. Uh, Let me call it. Jump down to the ninth chapter. The ninth chapter? Yeah. And Noah blessed, I mean, and Elohim blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth mm -hmm. and every bird and of the heavens upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be food for you, even as the herb, green herb, have I given you all things. Okay, now, Yahweh is telling Noah that the fear of you and the dread of you will be on all the animals. In other words, you're not going to be able to walk up to most to most animals and just pet them, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, even though we do have domestic, we have domesticated animals. We have right. man has done that, you know. But most animals, you know, you know, they'll <clears throat> when they're out in the wild. <clears throat> yeah, you know. At this time, at this time, see, look here, we got Noah. Maybe we, see, we have Noah out here, they're giving a sacrifice, all right? And here we have, let's, we're going to read that, the Noahic Covenant, uh, 11, jump down to 11. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Can you hear her? Can you hear you? Okay. And I will establish my covenant with you. All right. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Mm -hmm. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature mm -hmm. that is with you for a perpetual generation. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and thee and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which 
I, which is between me and you and every living creature of, of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all, of, all flesh. All right, good enough. All right, so now here's the opening here because we go by the steps. The sixth step is the door has to be open. Right. And see, and it was Yahweh Elohim who closed the door of the ark before the flood. So it would have to be Yahweh Elohim to open the door of the ark to let Noah and his family out. Now when Noah, and so when the door was open, the animals came out first, mm -hmm. then the man. How do I know that? Because, over here, because here, you have the fifth day of creation, the birds were created, then the, the, the crawling, peeping things, and then the amphibians and the mammals of the, of the, of the waters. Then here on the sixth day, the land animals were created first, then the man was created last. See, so the man was the last thing to come out. That's why I know over here with the ark. Mm. See, it was the animals that came out first, then the man, because the animals went out and they staked their claims, right. their territories. Okay, and then here come man coming along, you know, like, yeah, you know, okay, hey, this is a nice spot, you know, I'm going to build my house over there, I'm going to make this my North 40. There's a little water back there. I'll create an irrigation ditch up here. And you know, yeah, I think I can grow me some, some, some good wheat here. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, I can do something, you know, not knowing that the place might have been staked out by some, you know, some tigers or some lions, you know, or bears. Oh my. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And then you're out in the field one day, you know, you plow out in the field, next thing you know, you jumped on by a pack of wolves because right. you know, you know, you know, plow them over their territory. And they don't like the fact that you're there. Mm -hmm. So the land cried out for a hero. See, Genesis 10 and 8. The land cried out for a hero. And Cush begot Nimrod. Uh -huh. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Mm -hmm. He was a mighty hunter opposing Yahweh. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter opposing Yahweh, mm -hmm. and the beginning of his kingdom was Bel. Bel. And erect and erect. And Akai and Kanil in the land of Shinar. Out of the land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh and the city streets of Kaya. Kaya and Rest. Rest. Mm -hmm. Between Nineveh and Kela, the same is a great city, and Mizra became Luda, and Anima became Lilipin, and this, this, the town, yeah, and Partharus, and Kastluhim, out of whom came <coughs> Philistine, and the cat for the and Canaan begot Shinnah, <laughs> his firstborn, and Hethan, and the Jebusite, and the Amorites, and the Gerosites, and the Hemorites, and the Amorites. Okay, that's good enough. I'm okay. sorry, I didn't make you. You know, go that, down to. You know, I just wanted to get Nimrod, and then what he did, he built, this, he built Nineveh. You did read that, right? Yes. He built Nineveh, he built the, the roads, and everything. He built this town of Babel. Okay. You want me to go to 11 now? No, just, just, yeah, go to 11. I'll wait for you to finish. Uh -huh. Go to 11 and 1. And the whole earth was of one language and a few words. Uh -huh. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Oh, right. They found a plain in the land of Shinar east of Eden. Okay, go ahead. And they dwelt there. And they said to one another, Go to, let us make brick and burn, through, burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and bitumen had they for mortar. Mm -hmm. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto the heavens. Now whose top may reach to the heavens. Now why would they think that? Uh. Because back here, they got drowned out. Those demons who were cast out, incarnated in man. They were drowned out here. So they just said, well, you know what? Let's just build a tower. That way we'll build up to the highest amount. So, so that way we won't get drowned out. See, that, that was their reasoning. 
you know, that they had water on the right. they had water on the brain over here. Satanic immersion, psychological water on the brain. Right. Okay. Continue reading. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon mm -hmm. the face of the whole earth. And Yahweh came down to see the city uh -huh. and the tower which the children of men built. Now, Yahweh came down. How did Yahweh come down? Right. Did he float down on a cloud or something? No. See, no. See, Noah and his sons were still around. See, because, see, you read in the scripture, Noah, see, Noah died at 950 years old. 600 of those years, he lived in the antediluvian age. Mm -hmm. And 350 of those years was in the post-diluvian age. So the Tower of Babel was simply 101 years after the flood, which means Noah was still alive when this Tower of Babel was built. So he was able to visually see for himself what his posterity had done. Mm -hmm. And this is what Yahweh through him said. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have one language. They have one language, read. And this they begin to do. Mm -hmm. And now nothing will hinder them from anything they purpose to do. Mm -hmm. Go to, let us go down, and there compound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Okay, so now this is, I read this in a text, in a lecture, Dr. Kent. He said that what happened here, here we got the spirit law, the spoken word. He said there was a thick mist. A thick mist that descended, and you can see it here, that descended over the Tower of Babel. You see, as they were ascending up with their building, the thick mist was descending on them. And see, it caught them here, it caught them in the middle. See, it caught them in the middle, and, and see, it just, it just confused their tongue. Mm. All right, so that they couldn't, you know, understand each other what they were doing. Well, you know, in a, in a grand way. Now, there were some who couldn't understand each other. They just said, hey, well, look, you know, this project is a wash. Let's just go off somewhere and just do our thing, which is what they did. Right. And see, and it was, uh, read the Genesis. So Yahweh scattered them abroad mm -hmm. and thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off the, of building the city. Therefore is one is the name of it called Babel, mm -hmm. because Yahweh did their confound their, their language see, confound all their, the earth. Confound their languages. That's, I wish I had the blackboard. <laughs> but see, but the word Babel, B-A-B-B-L-E, you know, Babel, that means confusion, you know, because mm -hmm. you know? I've heard people say, you know, somebody talking nonsense way and they just say, just stop your babbling, mm -hmm. you know, just babbling. But see, but the word Babel, B-A-B-E-L. Right. -E See, the word Babel actually means gate of L. See, the word Bab, B-L, B-A-B means gate. Mm -hmm. So Nimrod was saying, oh, I'm creating the gate of L, and he's sitting at the top of it, meaning I'm the Lord. Right. See, setting himself up. All right. Okay. But now, here, you know, here, back here, we, we showed you that those demons prior to Noah coming out of the ark, they were going through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. Okay, well, here's the same thing. You know, they're going through a lot of places, you know, <laughs> seeking rest. I'm talking because they were scattered. Right. See, they were scattered, going, on, going to and fro. Okay, but now, but see, we see how this is the beginning of the post diluvian age. And this age was a, literally a different type of earth. It was a different type of world. And, and, and I don't mean age, I'm talking about a different type of planet. Right. See, because in the antediluvian age, one, man was a giant. Right. You know, Adam was a giant of a man, so, so said Dr. Kinley. The earth was one land right. at that time. All right. When there were no North America, South America, Europe, Australia, Africa, Asia, none of those countries. None of those continents, just one land mass. Another thing was it did not rain in the Antediluvian Age. The water came from up the ground, that was water, you know, but no water from the sky. It was a different, it was a different environment. And then after the flood, you could literally say when Noah and his family came out of the ark, 
they literally stepped out onto a new world, so to speak. It was a different world or a different age than what it was when they left. See? See? See, a new world, a new, a new earth, so to speak. And look, Dr., the way Dr. Kim explained it, I'm over here. He explained it like this. He said this. He said it was, now this was an end of an age. I'm talking about with Noah, the flood. This was the end of an age. But it was not a full end. See, it wasn't a full end because the earth still remained. Right. Same way here with Joshua's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. This was the end of an age. But it was not a full end because the earth, right, the earth remained. Here, at the universal revelation of Yahshua Messiah, now this will be a full end. Right. Why? Because the earth will not remain. Mm -hmm. See? there would have to be a new earth state. See, for a new earth state to, to come about, the old earth state Pass away. would have to be obliterated. Okay, and this will be a full end. These are three ages that are marked in the realm of time. The ante, the post, and the present. And as we went through in the last few sessions about these dispensations, see, these dispensations are like links in a chain. And when you really understand it, it's like a wheel. And maybe we can get that. Uh, Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel, the first chapter. That's something you don't hear too much about. Right. But, but it's a very important thing to know and understand. See, about the wheel. Ezekiel. Uh, I know it's the first chapter. Ezekiel 1 and uh, 16. Uh, we start 16? Wait a minute. Uh, start with 15. Okay. Ezekiel 1 and 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one of the will was upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the will and their work was like unto a color of a barrel. And the, they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. And they went, and they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. Check you out. Uh, that, that's good enough. See, a wheel in the midst of a wheel. And I'm looking for the tabernacle pattern here. Huh? Volume one? Volume one, yes. Volume one. I want the, yeah, the, uh, page 81. Volume one, page 81. This is what I want. Oh, yeah. See here. Here's the pattern of the tabernacles. The court round about. Holy place, the most holy place. Now, the court round about is, that goes around the holy place and the most holy place. That's a wheel. Right. That's one wheel right there. Here you got the camp of the Israelites, these 12 tribes, and they are encamped right. around the tabernacle. That's a wheel. Right. See, see, that's a wheel in itself. So when you consider the tabernacle, which has one wheel, this is a wheel in the midst of another wheel. Okay? A wheel in the midst of a wheel. All right? Now, that is represented here by the dispensations. Here you got seven dispensations. You got three ages in the realm of time. That's a wheel right there. Right. A wheel in the midst of a bigger wheel, which is the seven ages. Mm -hmm. 
That's another wheel in the midst of a wheel. A wheel in the midst of a wheel. Okay? A wheel in the midst of a wheel. That's why, oh well, I said I went that far. Because we, we, we talked about the seven steps. Right. We talked about the seven. Go to page one, volume one, 125. 120, uh, actually, 128. 128. See, we're going to try to show you this. Come up this way, come here. And while she gets that, she's going to read it. See? Yeah. Now she's going to read the caption. It says, um, uh, Y1 128, the number seven in Jewish theology denotes perfection. All right. See, denotes perfection. Because, see, on the previous page, see, it talked about, and we went through it. The previous page talked about the number seven is perfection. And it goes through the right. seven steps of the tabernacle as compared with the seven steps of the migratory pattern. Now Dr. Kennedy is going to show you the repetition of the number seven in Jewish theology. Continue. The Jews were commanded of Elham to observe seven, seven events which ended in the week of days. Which ends in a week of days. Listen carefully, you know, a wheel in the midst of a wheel. And the and and reason why I'm harping because it because I'm remembering one of Dr. Kennedy's last lectures. And then I remember him bringing it up in this, in, in this lecture. And it, and it kind of blew me away because he was harping on the importance of it. Because once you begin to understand the pattern, then you begin to understand the motions of the pattern. But as I said earlier, the flow and the rhythm of the pattern. The wheel in the midst of the wheel is part of that flow. Read. Week of weeks. Week of years. Week of week of years. Week of week of years, week of days, weeks of the, you know. He's showing you this repetition of the wheel in the midst of a wheel. Mm -hmm. Quickly. Week of millennials. Week of ages. Which are as follows. Mm -hmm. Number one. There are seven days in the week. There are seven days in a week of days. Which end was a Sabbath Saturday. See, which ends with a Sabbath day. See, that's what Moses saw up here. Seven days, see, that he saw the creation and, and, and Elohim rested on the seventh day. See, that's, read that again. There are seven days in a week of days which end with the Sabbath day. See, that's a wheel. That's one wheel. See, now here's a wheel on top of that. Read. Two, there are seven weeks in weeks in a week of weeks, which end with the Feast of Pentecost. Wait a minute, you're not reading that right, I don't think. There right are again. seven weeks in a week of weeks. Thank you. <laughs> which end with the Feast of Pentecost. Which it ends with the Feast of Pentecost. It's simply saying this, seven times seven weeks. See, seven weeks with seven, seven sacks. We just said seven days that ends with a sack. So now you got seven of these. Seven days, seven, seven weeks, seven times seven, that's 49 days, plus one, and that, from, the, from Yahshua's resurrection, plus one, that gives you the day of Pentecost. The word Pentecost is Greek for 50. Right. Which is seven times seven, plus one. That, but that's a wheel. See, that's another wheel. See, go ahead. Three, there are seven months in a week of months which end with the Feast of the Tabernacles. Now see, now there's seven months in a Feast of Months that ends with the Feast of Tabernacles. When Solomon's temple was dedicated, it was dedicated during the Feast of Tabernacles. And see, there's a seven month period from Abib, see, to Tishri, which is the seventh month. See, for all these different feast days. So there's seven months in a feast, in a week of months that ends with the but the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the seventh feast out of the, out of the series of seven feasts. It's the last feast, and this is where Solomon's Temple was dedicated around at that time. Wheel. Okay, mm -hmm. but it's a wheel. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making. Continue. Four, there are seven years in a week of years, which end with the Sabbath day. Uh, okay, a sabbatical year. Every seven, seven years was a sabbatical year, which they were, you know, 
let the land rest, etc. But that was every seven years, a sabbatical year. All right, continue. Five. There are a week of weeks of years which end with the year of jubilee. All right, the year of jubilee is just a compound of what happened with Pentecost. Right. Pentecost was seven times seven weeks plus one, which equals fifty. Jubilee is simply seven years times seven, which equals forty-nine, plus one, which equals the year of Jubilee. But it's another wheel on top of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, read. Six. There are seven millennials in a week of millennials, mm -hmm. which end with the Sabbath of immortality. That's it, now, see, now there's seven millenniums. A millennium is a thousand years. 6,000 years, right. and that ends with the Sabbath of immortality. That's why mm -hmm. this word is here, Sabbath of immortality. Because the seventh dispensation is a dispensation of immortality, but it is a sabbatical dispensation. Okay? And look, each of them is by a man. Here's Adam here, Noah here, here's Abraham here, Moses here, Peter here, Dr. Kinley here, the seventh, who's the man here? Yahshua Messiah. Right. But I'll let you know, you know, a little secret. See, it was Yahshua Messiah all along. Right. It just looked like Adam, right. Noah, uh, Abraham, Moses, Peter, Peter. Kenneth. Yeah, it was Yahshua all along. Hmm. Okay? Go ahead. Seven. There are seven ages in a week of ages, mm -hmm. which ends with the completion of the purpose of Yahweh before mm -hmm. ushering in the new order of things see, as we, Yahweh is eternal. We went through that last week. See, that's this here at the end. See, here he is fully revealed, standing in the midst of the seven branch lampstand with seven stars in his hand. Seven ages are completed, and now he's getting ready to sow in seven new ages. Mm -hmm. See, but this is the great circle. This is the last circle. See, the circle. See, but this is the biggest circle of all, eternity, because everything abides within Yahweh, right. which is eternity. That's the biggest circle of all that you cannot get out of. See, you can't get out of that circle to look back and see, oh, this is what Yahweh looks uh, like. Nope. See, that circle, you're not, you're not going to get out of that circle. That's the biggest circle of all. But you see the point that Yahweh is doing, he's repetitiously doing these things so that, okay, if you don't catch it here, maybe you'll catch it here. Or maybe you'll catch it here. But the one thing he's showing you is that in his principles, he is truly consistent. Okay? That's why I said earlier, the manifestation may change, but the principle right. will always remain the same. See? It will always remain the same. Okay? Yeah. Um, any questions, <laughs> comments, anything? You know, we got a few minutes left. I mean, this is this is a workshop. You know, we want we want you to 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 take the time and go into this stuff and look at this. And we want to get it. We, we want to get it to the nuts and bolts of this right. thing. You know, and see how it works, and then put it back together the way we found it, and just go with it. And that's what Dr. Kennedy did here. He broke it down with these charts. You know, to show you the nuts and bolts of how this purpose is working. And operate it. See, it's up to you to take the time to engage it so that it can engage you and allow it to teach you right. about the purpose and plan of Yahweh. Okay? Yeah, uh, okay. Keep reading in the textbook. Yeah, there's yeah, someone down there at the bottom. You, you know, because he talks about sevens and all these different examples of it. Right. There are other references on the seven. Seven. Yeah, there, there, there. Yeah, you can read it if you want. There are, there are other references of seven such as seven days of creation, seven priests with seven trumpets, seven branch candlestick. Solomon's temple was seven years in building. The blood was sprinkled seven times before the mercy seat. There were seven feasts of Yahweh, which lasted seven days each. The book of Revelation was addressed to seven assemblies. There are seven spirits before the throne of God, Yahweh. Seven stars, seven seals, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven heads, seven crowns, seven thunders, seven eyes. There are many other references of seven to imperfection. Okay. 
So now see, then, then he, there's, all these things just represent the purpose of Yahweh in operation and the perfection of it. You know, what he's doing in this purpose. And that's why, see, for me, for me, my thing is, is just trying to instruct and show how the pattern works. And for you to take that and run with it yourself, you know, right? You, you know, you get into it and see if you come up with the same results that I've been coming up with. See? And some people will say, oh, it don't matter what, whether you're going to run the charts or not. I think it different. Right. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Otherwise, why did Dr. Kelly go through the trouble to take these charts? Must probably. See? It has to be that way. Mm -hmm. Now, some people may be a more adept at it than you, and I can understand that because the body is made up of many members. Mm -hmm. But at least a very rudimentary understanding of what this pattern is and the migratory pattern, that is something every student should know. Mm -hmm. Every student. I don't give a damn, you know, well, I don't have that much education. I, I'm not a speaker and all that. Every student should know some rudimentary basis of this tabernacle pattern because it is the Holy Spirit. Right. Look, go get uh, Habakkuk. Second chapter. I want both versions. Holy name and the King James version. I want the yeah, Habakkuk, the second chapter. I want the Holy Name version and the King James version. Holy name. Read. I will stand upon my watch. No, read the King James first. I want that one first. Who's got King James? I got Holly King James. Yeah, yeah uh, she's got it. She's got a uh, Schofield, which is close. <laughs> There's a reason why I want to do this, and you'll see when, right. when we read it. She is exercising 
her fluency in the English grammar. Mm. Okay? Right? So that you don't sound dumb or incoherent or unlearned. Right. See? See, that's the thing. To be fluent in this. This is why I stress so much about you understanding the pattern, the migratory pattern, the correlation, so that you can take it and run with it fluently by using the scriptures, like we did here, using the scriptures to walk through it and right. see it fluently and see it clearly, what Yahweh is doing. Okay? All right? Uh, we're almost out of time, and I'm going to leave off with, uh, how about this? We'll leave off with uh, volume two, page, volume four, page two. I want to, I want to have this read. And I put this on our uh, YouTube page, Dr. Kenley's uh, 1958 video. Mm. You know, it's posted on our page, but before I posted it up there, I added, I added this, this paragraph onto the video so that people, when they read it, when they read, look at the video, they read this so they'll know exactly you know, what this, this class is about. Uh, yeah, volume four, page two, first paragraph. Well, well. Go ahead, Doug. Well, I have 40 years of my personal experience, plus an intensified and exhaustible scientific and philo philosophical, philosophical research. Or since Yahweh showed me the divine vision and, revel and revealed the interpretation of its meaning. I have not found one so-called religion, faith, that fully realized that Yahweh Elohim is a universal spirit pattern with the immutable spirit law embodied within himself by which he established the perfection of the operation of his revealed eternal purpose. Or in other words, Yahweh declared the end from the beginning, this same universal spirit pattern, and the law, and the law, law and, with the, the I'm law. Sorry, and the spirit law. Am I not right? No, no not. <laughs> this <laughs> same universal spirit pattern with the spirit law embodied therein was revealed to Moses or the prophets and the apostles by his spirit, which is sufficient to reconcile the world to the one and only true Yahweh and the true and the one and only true way to universal truth, righteousness, joy, and perfect peace. Frankly and honestly speaking, the true knowledge and the understanding oh, right? no, okay. the true knowledge and the understanding of the divine pattern and its unerring spirit law operation manifesting Yahweh and his purpose through every cosmetic, co cosmic phrase of nature and throughout the dispensation of ages in the supreme test of every human creature, personal experience, understanding, and knowledge of Yahweh and his kingdom. Okay. Now that, that right there, I, I take that as our mission statement for our tech pack. Right. Just to show you this divine pattern, see, show you this divine pattern, which in turn is the is the key to the kingdom of Yahweh, right? Which is love, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit being the understanding of this pattern and what's on these charts. See, that's the thing that we, as an organization, wish to try to impress upon people. We want you to take the time and go through these things, to read, research, rehearse the matter. We want you to furrow the, you know, the, your brain and, and, you know, and, and pull up the stumps and stuff. That's what we do. We'll, we'll pull up the slump, you pull up the stumps and furrow your mind. And, you know, but but, but it's, it's the sun, S-O-N, right. like the S-U-N. It's the S-O-N that's going to shine on you and reveal to you how he truly is and how he actually exists. And he's going to confirm that revelation by the understanding of this pattern. Okay? And that's all that we want, you know. There's no big eyes, there's no little right. eyes, you know. I don't have anything special or new to offer other than what's 
Right. Well, it's already been written. Right. You know, Dr. Kennedy said it best. I have given you enough to save you. And if you take the time and look over the material that he has left, and you truly engage it, you will truly find out that he was not lying. And that what you have here, and it's the same as we all have, these charts, his record, and see, just go through it, and it's the Holy Spirit that's going to reveal himself to you. Okay? Thank you very much for, for tuning in. We hope that you were edified by the things that were said today. As always, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. hallelujah. Shadow of a doubt. Who else could say that? Did your minister in church say that? No. And he's been proving it to the day he died. And we're proving it the same way. Okay? Because we have this vision. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we don't have our, our whiteboard with us today. But uh, we'll have it again next week. Uh, my jaw's tightening up. Okay, um, that's all I'll stand for the doxology. Now I want to hear that it will keep you from falling and prevent you falling with presence with exceeding joy. To the Lord wise out of our Savior, to Yahshua and the Son of Sower, with the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all time, now and ever, let's all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stagnant, you know, where you're, you're, you're storing more uh, information. Yeah. <laughs>